So I was waiting for Carlin to water the dog. Uh, a couple things, I think there's five of them, that uh, the upgrades that we did on the whaler, uh, and really I would recommend for any dinghy that you're gonna have up here, uh, is number one, uh, this ball right here, the suicide ball, uh, with a with a single outboard, it really makes maneuvering the boat super easy because you do a lot of full lock to lock uh, maneuvers and reverse and forward to be able to walk the boat sideways and be able to tie it up, uh, especially in, in tight areas. And this has come in really handy, so I would definitely recommend that. Uh, number two is two fuel tanks. This 13 foot whaler comes with one fuel tank, it's a six gallon tank. You currently only get about five gallons in it. Uh, if you put six in, especially with a vented cap, and if you hit any bumpy water, anything other than smooth, fuel starts bouncing out of it. So, five gallons. Well, you need more than five gallons up here. The fuel docks are few and far between up in Desolation Sound here. You can get to them. You better have enough fuel to be able to get there. So we put in a second fuel tank, pretty straightforward. And you can just switch the fuel line from one tank to the other. And that really, makes it much more comfortable and livable up here. And, you know, we've uh, we've run one tank out already, uh, just moving around and uh, conserving as much as we can, but still having that second tank was imperative. The third thing that I would recommend on upgrade on this dinghy that has really come in uh, as mandatory is this, this cooler that we have here. Um, not only is it a seat, but it's also a cooler. So when you're out, you need to hydrate, have water, uh, run to the store and pick up any food that needs to keep, be kept cold just throw it right in there uh, the fourth thing is you need to have navigation uh, on on a dinghy like this especially up in Desolation Sound where there's uh, hazards all over the place that are just underneath the water and you know if you're a local you would probably know where all of those are but we're not and so charts are are key to make sure that, uh, well, you know, blow up a prop or damage a boat or strand yourself or worse. Uh, so having navigation software on the boat is key. We use Navionics on our phones and uh, it works out really well. We have that in our, our uh, top 10 apps uh, video that uh, it, it's imperative, works out really well. It's a backup on our main uh, vessel as well in the Elliott. But this, deal right here is a, a charging base. It's a wireless charging base. So not only does it hold the phone, it uh, works out really well that it actually charges it at the same time. So you don't have to worry about running your phone dead uh, with your charts being on all the time. And we have a, I have an iPhone 13, which has a really bright screen. So I don't have any issues with it washing out in the sun. That used to be a, a big problem. That's why you would buy a dedicated chart plotter because the screens were a lot brighter. Um, and I, I wouldn't be against getting a dedicated uh, chart plotter, but... And the last one is an anchor. Because you always need to anchor your boat, whether it's on shore or if there's an emergency. All right, time to go get Leroy and Carlin. And the bonus round, it's not mandatory, but it's uh, nice to have, is a bilge pump in any dinghy because otherwise you're just manually having to pump out the dinghy and especially in the Pacific Northwest, even in the summer, it's probably gonna rain. And it's done a lot of that in this trip. So it's nice having an auto bilge pump in the dinghy, even though whalers, they self bail, but you have to pull the plug out and let it sit there. And then when you step back in the boat and put the plug back in, then it starts filling up. I would just get a bilge pump, nice little automatic electronic one. They work really well, but they don't cost that much. And uh, well, quite frankly, I never even think about having to get water out of the whaler.